I want to welcome you today to our video devotional here at Covenant Keepers Ministries. It's Thursday, December the 30th. Two days, we're going to flip the calendar to January 1, 2022. And we're talking about this week, preparing our heart for Christ. Just letting Christ take control of uh, the very motivation of our life. Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24. First in the New King James Version of the Bible, and then in the Message Bible. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. In the message, investigate my life. Oh God, find out everything about me. Cross-examine and test me. Get a clear picture of what I'm about. See for yourself whether I've done anything wrong. Then guide me on the road to eternal life. Personally, I desire my heart to be ready for Christ to control me to be what we use as a phrase in Christianity that may not always be understood, him to be Lord over my life. He to have control of the decisions I make and so forth. And again, David helps us. He helps us place this into prayer before God. Oh God, know my anxieties. And I don't know what you're thinking of when you hear that word and you say, well, I'm not anxious about anything. Well, I praise God for that. If that's true in you. And we're told, don't worry in the living Bible. Philippians, stop worrying. <laughs> be anxious about nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. But David's pretty honest about this. He, he just says, oh, Oh God, as you're searching me and, and know my anxieties, know what gives me, what frightens me and what causes me to distrust you. I don't know what you're thinking of, but finances to disease, health, how we appear to others, to sanity, to performance everywhere, home, school, work, church, society. We want to appear to have our act together when we don't. There's something about each of us that if we would confess it is a hindrance to our moving past the fear, the worry, the concerns, and the apprehensions that plague us. It is that one anxiety that we can't seem to shake. It's that one thing that our, our mind seems attached to, it just clings to us and hinders our progress in other areas of our life. And God, while you're searching me, know my anxieties. Show me where I'm not trusting you. And I think that that's what David's asking God to reveal, the very things that cause him to fail to trust God, to supply every need for every desire that he's had in his life, to even take the desire away that wasn't proper before him. And he's saying, Father, help me see those things which create worry, fret, and distrust of your ability to see me through what I'm facing today. I don't know if something is jumping out at you right now, but maybe there's something that repeatedly, and I've, I've heard this a lot, that the finances in a, in a culture that, man, I'll tell you, things are changing so quickly and prices, some of them risen 20 and 30%. Used cars have gone up 42% in the last year. When you start thinking about that, if you already have a uh, an anxiety about finances, how, how are we going to make ends meet and, and things have gotten tough for you, trust God. See, he's, he's going to show you that I, I'm in charge of your finances if you obey me. If you do what I've instructed you to do, when he says in Luke 6, 38, given it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. See, so if you're struggling in finances, follow God's principles about giving and you'll see God bless your finances over and over. He'll take care of your needs. Maybe your spending's been wrong. Maybe you've done things to consume things upon your lust and, and you've overspent. <laughs> you've done it to be approved of someone or whatever the reason might be. And it, it's created anxiety for you. Then you must, maybe the Holy Spirit's gonna shed a little light today or a little revelation on how your spending needs to change. It could be something else. I just brought up finances because I've been told about those so many times in the ministry. There, there's, for many of us, there's one or two things that we carry throughout life where I'm unable to let go of it. And it prevents our trust and growth in our faith. 
as a result, we lack the calm assurance that God's able to carry us through every trial and trouble we will ever be in. You see this nervous uneasiness which awakens fear of disapproval from God or others pervades our culture. I know acceptance is one of the the highest priorities of most people's lives. And we do need people to accept us. But when no one's accepting us, we must rest in the reassurance that God has through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And where we have this nervous uneasiness and, and this uh, a fear of disapproval, it leads us to distrust God or his ability or his care of us in the very hour we need it the most. In crying out to God, in a, to know our anxieties, David is going to see them himself and then either deal with it or let it alone, which will cause it to continue to flourish. Because all the issues of my life flow out of my heart. I want it readied to be the throne room of God. So these anxieties have to go. I want God not self-seated at the ultimate place of authority in my life. And so when I have fear, be it about physical things, health issues, it's simply a matter that I can't control it right now anyway. Even if I were a doctor, doctors have surgeries that are performed on them. Can I trust God? Maybe you already have a handle on your anxieties. Maybe you don't want to deal with them because... That's how people know you and, and you like the attention you get when worry overwhelms you. I don't, I'm not attempting to be sarcastic here. It's a, it's a terrible thing. It's happened to so many people in our culture. They get a lot of attention by the very things that are frustrating their trust in God. Maybe that's the only time you get the attention and you need. And so you continue in this miserable state for the mere relief that you find that someone is empathizing with your worries. Stop. Now. The searching of God is to move you out of the distrust into a place of security, confidence, and maturity. As that happens, peace results, calm comes in the storm, and the rock you've anchored your life to holds. So I want to ask you this question. Because we need the Holy Spirit to turn lights on. I don't know what you need right now. I don't know what anxieties you've been carrying. But what are you uneasy about today? What are you uneasy about today? What regularly causes you to fret? Is it under your control? Can you stop it at will? If so, then do it. Just do it. But if not, trust God. He started the work in you. And he will completed. You can trust him with anything in your life. Let's pray. Father, know my anxieties. Father, know the things that worry me. Show them to me. Show me the, some of them are so unreal, they don't even make sense. Show me that so I can learn to trust you. Show me what I need to do. Show me so I can mature so I can trust you with everything in my life. Do that for us, God. Help us today. Search us afresh and anew that you might be glorified through the way we live our lives because I know that's when we're going to have the greatest pleasure about living ourselves. Thank you. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. You know, he knows your worries already. Let him reveal them to you and then decide you're gonna put your trust in God. God bless you, have a fantastic day.